Today on To The Point, we've loved her journey so much on World of Dance, we thought the next step would be to have her on today's show. Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk, we talk movies. All right, welcome on in To The Point with Kristen Burt. We are so excited to have you guys watching us here today. Of course, the show is presented by Dance Network and Popcorn Talk, but we have a very special guest from season three, World of Dance, Briar Nole. Hello. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? Did you like my little pun? I loved it. I was laughing <laughs> inside really hard. <laughs> It was great. We actually did that twice, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> the first time, I really let it out. I, I was know. like, that was amazing. Well, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta have a good pun in there, you, you know? Do. I you was do. like, we had to do the next step. And uh, just for transparency, so i like you guys always to know, this is a pre-taped show because, Briar, you are in town now. Yes. <laughs> and I didn't have an open slot, but we did have one on the April 30th show, so here we go. Yay! Yes. Amazing. I know. Well, so thank you so much for coming on the show. We of course. Are, I've had so many requests to have you on. Oh, that's so sweet. Well, um, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And I have to say that I'm a super fan girl, and I, you have been one of my favorites since Aww. the qualifiers. Thank you. That means a lot. Means so a lot. I, I, we're going to talk a lot about World of Dance, and I'm, okay. I'm going to fight for you a little bit here on this, because there were a couple times during the show I'm like, she's underscored. <laughs> <laughs> and I know I'm not the only one saying that. I've seen it Aww. all throughout the internet. But I always like to know from everyone, um, what made you decide to do the show? Yeah. Um, so I guess most of everyone would know that I went through a pretty serious health issue. Mm -hmm. Um, I, in my age of being like 16, when they first started, I was probably at like my peak of dancing for where I, I thought I was going to go with it, you know, right. training like 40 hours a week, um, and like competitive, like crazy, like competitions galore. Um, and then I started getting these seizures. So it kind of took a back toll and just got worse and worse and worse. So for two years, um, through what felt like my prime time, I wasn't able to kind of continue on that journey and path that I wanted to continue with. So it was pretty hard and devastating, but I think um, when I was able to get on medication and get better, I think the first thing I thought of was having a comeback. And with this being such an amazing platform for me to do that with, not only to share my story, but hopefully to inspire other people, I think that was such an amazing thing that I saw that in World of Dance, and that's kind of what inspired me to train hard and get going to get on this show. Now, did you reach out to World of Dance, or did someone kind of slide into your DMs on Instagram? Because I know this does happen. Um, so they actually... Fun fact is I actually auditioned in season two. So they mm -hmm. found me through YouTube. And so they reached out to my management and wanted me to audition. And I was not diagnosed yet with my epilepsy. So I was having seizures still. Mm -hmm. But this show isn't on like how fast you can pick up choreo, which was what my seizures were triggered by. So I was like, you know, I can put a solo together and perform. So I went to the like in room auditions, I guess, in New York. And I got onto the season. But I knew um, with my health that I just wasn't you know, in my best shape that I knew that I could have been, even though I wanted to do it so bad. So I let that go and... So you actually declined season two. Yeah. That's a hard decision. It, it was so hard. But I just knew that I wanted to come back strong and I knew that I wasn't at the point to do that yet because everything was at its peak with my health. Nothing was figured out and I was still having them. How long did it take to get a diagnosis for your epilepsy? Um, it took about two years. It's yeah. a long time. Mm -hmm. Doctors were probably doing tons of tests on you, trying to figure out what it was. Did they have an inclination at, at epilepsy, or were they going another direction? They were going another direction. So <sighs> I had my first seizure in 2016, I believe. I was like on set all day um, on a TV series, and then I dropped by my home like dance studio, Canadian Dance Company, and I wanted to just take a class because I was just so anxious to dance. And I got in late to the class, so I had to pick up on what they had already learned on top of what they were still teaching. Mm -hmm. And I just had a blackout, and my hands started to shake, and I just fully fell unconscious. And I'd never been unconscious before, like not even fainting, so I had no idea what was happening. Oh, wow. So I just woke up to like all the kids were gone and it was just like my teachers around me and I, I was so That's like I was scary. like I don't know what to do yeah I'm sure for everyone it was scary just watching it too mm -hmm. when someone just blacks out like that you think yeah. what's going on and I was like 16 so I was still I wasn't 18 yet so mm -hmm. I had a pediatric neurologist look at me um and they did EEGs they did you know everything that comes along with figuring out if it could be epilepsy and everything came back fine like they couldn't find anything so then they kind of diagnosed me I guess with like anxiety induced seizures um or like stress induced, but I knew that mm -hmm. like, I'm not 
that much of a stressful person, especially to like put myself into a seizure. I just knew that, especially you know, in a I, dance class. I think yeah, where like it's something where you I'm love. Most, exactly, it just made no sense to me, and I knew something was wrong because um, over the years I saw more people. I thought maybe it was a concussion from getting dropped. You know, like so many times, not so many times, but like there's <laughs> but like happens. a few times that it happens. Yep. Um, like years ago in dance, I was like maybe it just triggered a few years later, and so I thought it was that. And finally, when I was 18, we found another neurologist in Toronto that was able to diagnose me with it. So I wore an EEG home for three days, which I had never done in the previous ones. Uh, and they were able to track it throughout my daily, I guess, schedule. Were you telling your parents, like, this is not it? Like, there's something else? Or were they seeing it too? I mean, it was hard because I didn't really know what to believe. Like, I wanted to trust the doctors for sure. And my parents have never seen one even to this day. Um, but they were obviously super worried and... Um, I don't know. Everything was just happening so fast. And I knew that something was wrong. And I think they knew that, you know, since I wasn't stopping to dance and, you know, even if I was seeing a psychologist to try and figure out like what I could do to stop these seizures when Mm -hmm. I get into a dance studio, it just, I I didn't feel right to me that it was that. Um, And so I was like, you know, I think we just need to keep searching because I can't just keep having these seizures, even though I don't feel stressed. (laughs) Like it didn't really make sense. Yeah. You're like, I'm not feeling anxious. And it started to get worse. Like I started when I write really fast or when I started to talk really fast um, or even typing anything to do with like mind to like action would just too fast would trip me out. It would be weird. So I knew it was getting worse and I'm like, something's up. So finally, thank gosh. It's a good reminder to be an advocate for your health. If you're Mm -hmm. thinking you're not getting the answers to (laughs) to say, we need to maybe get a second opinion or or find someone that opinions are so awesome because you know, they could miss something that's super small and it could affect your whole whole life. You can be the greatest person at your job and Mm -hmm. still make a mistake. It happens to everybody. Exactly. I mean, I put you down as Briar Mole. It was close though. It was super close. 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 I didn't have my glasses. That's my fault. (laughs) But, um, but that's, uh, but it really is something that's super important because it is your health and you didn't yeah. want to give up dance. So And that was the only place they were happening. Like, that's I mean, I, as I was saying, they started to, no, I didn't have seizures when I was typing or any of that, but I started to get the feeling as if they would happen if I continued. So what was that yeah. like when you knew like, oh, I feel like a seizure is going to come on. So like what I get is, um, I get these like, not blackouts. I call them blackouts. They're not necessarily blackouts because I don't see black, but it's like, um, how I like to explain it is for the dancers that are listening to it. Mm-hmm. Um, when you're learning choreo and you just forget the choreo and you your blank. mind just goes blank. It's yeah. like your mind's just thinking of nothing technically. Or when you're waking up and your mind's still like in a blur, that's what it feels like. So I can still see and I can still talk right before a seizure, but my mind goes into a blur and it stays in a blur. And then my hand starts to go and then I can't stop. Do it you know there. how long they last? Is it just like a minute? A few no, seconds? I mean, it depends. There was a few that were worse than others. So wow. some were like a minute, some were like five minutes. Wow. Yeah. It, it was pretty crazy. Now you're on medication that mm-hmm. regulates it. Do you yeah. just have to take a, a pill a day kind of thing? Yeah. I take two pills a day, a- one in the morning and one at night. And it's, I've been good for a year so far. Not good. That's amazing. I know. I know. See, that's when medicine goodness. is incredible. Yes. And I got lucky because sometimes it's difficult to find the medication that works for you. Like, and that was the scary part was getting back into a studio with medication, but not knowing if it could work or not. Ooh. Right. And like just trying it. But I mean, I had amazing, obviously my family was amazing and super supportive, but I also had, um, amazing teachers. So everyone at my home studio, um, worked with me, like hip hop teacher would take, you know, just five, not five minutes, maybe like an hour with me to just do five seconds of choreo just to see if I felt anything. Then mm-hmm. we would take it so I'd work with Alan and just do across the floor and see if I could just pick up a count of eight across the floor. Right. And just slowly build up um, with the people I'm comfortable with. And then I could do a class with people I knew. And then I slowly got into a class with people it's I didn't know. Blocks. So it's just building. It's building. I was really grateful to have a, a strong team behind me that was willing to help me get back uh, up top. That's because I love you. I mean, it is because if you don't want to keep someone away from something that they love to do and, and it's are hard great because at. you also don't want to hurt. Like, I mean, my family, like they, they were like, you're, you know, you're going to have a seizure if you go there. So, you know, like we don't want you to hurt yourself. Like maybe mm-hmm. just don't go there until we figure it out. And it was so hard because of course, like I think part of it was anxious when I got into a studio. Cause like I knew I was probably going to have one. So yeah, you're like, it was this part. Gonna happen. Yeah. So did the medicine work right away though? You got into the studio, you're doing building blocks and it was um, pretty I good. I think I got on the medication in December of 2017. Mm-hmm. And then I think I probably got into a studio maybe a month or two after. So I gave it some time because I think it took like six weeks to actually get into in. your body. Yep. So I think a few months after is when I really started to slowly 
get back into it. That's incredible. I think I probably started with writing and talking and making sure everything was fine there. Yeah. And then just build that and then up. Like, Let's try it with movement. Let's see yeah. what's happening here. That's mm-hmm. amazing. Yeah. That's, what, a, what a story. And I'm sure you've heard from a lot of people that have had seizures, have epilepsy, probably really inspired by your story. I hope so. I, it's, I've gotten a few messages and it, it really warms my heart because I, I mean, before I was diagnosed with epilepsy or even having seizures, I mean, I knew what epilepsy was, but it's not something that's talked about too often. Mm-hmm. And there's so many people that have it. And it's crazy. I, I was blown away by how many people are affected by it. And it's really great to have such a strong community of people that, know. you know, support you. Do and, it to yep. get, yeah. And we get through it together, which is amazing. That's great. Mm-hmm. Well, let's talk about uh, your world of dance journey, mm-hmm. uh, which has been pretty incredible. And I, I like to always find out what did you do to prepare for the qualifiers? Because that's the first one. You just want to mm-hmm. Get there, get that 85 score, and make it into the duels, and then really yeah. start to worry about the competition. That's what I always think. Yeah, so, I mean, to prep for the whole competition, um, I'm, su- I mean, I'm super competitive, but I'm also really, like, when I put my mind to something, I'm just going to do the best that I can possibly do. Mm-hmm. So, about, like, six months before when I found out that I was going to be on the show, I just went into full training mode. Like, I would train, um, like, all styles, even though I was really just doing, you know, contemporary jazz on the show. I was <laughs> training in ballet all the time. Even, like, hip-hop classes, um, I was doing break dancing. I was training at a gymnastics gym, working on tricks, conditioning, strengthening, cardio, yoga, like, everything I was trying to Whatever do. Whatever you just, could do. Yeah, to make sure, because I had to, again, kind of start from the bottom. I had a good base from, you know, all my years of dance, but I had to really build up to be as strong or even stronger than I was before. So it was a lot of training, and then um, mentally I was just so ready to, to come back. And, it was time. And do it. Yeah, it was time. So, you know, as much as I was nervous, I was just so excited. And so I just put together a routine with my choreographer and who is your choreographer for qualifiers so for qualifiers um his name's alan lupian so okay. he owns canadian dance company great we like to give the choreographers a shout out because yes. they work very hard yes that's, <laughs> that's one of them i have yes. a few but for qualifiers yep um i mean he's like my second dad he's like i grew up since i was seven at his studio so he definitely grew me into the dancer that he's i've known become you since you he were a baby know, oh yes and he he was with me through my whole health issue um and just trained me. He just knows my dancing so well and what works when and what, you know, he just, he knows. So it was really cool to get back into a studio after years and then work with him again and put a routine together that we were proud of. So Okay, so you're yeah. here in L.A., you're mm-hmm. filming, you go through that crazy tunnel. I walked through that tunnel on that set. And I've <laughs> told every single one of you guys who has competed on the show, yeah. I don't know how you guys do it. And you like, keep it together. Yeah. It's intimidating. Yeah. yeah. I mean, even the lights, like when you stand in the center and they just go, boom, it's like a lot. It's a beautiful. But it's amazing. It's 3D, a cool feeling. LED, technological set. and yes. I, But I found it just, I, I was really impressed with what you guys do out there because there's <laughs> a lot of pressure and then you have this like crazy set and you're like, oh, there's J-Lo and Derek and Neo. Yeah. Yeah. No big deal. I know. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. <laughs> so how did you keep yourself calm for the first one? Because you just have to stay grounded. And mm-hmm. I, the funny thing is one of the notes from the judges was, you were really confident out there, very calm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, growing up, I was always, like, super nervous, of course, but I kind of channel my nerves in, like, a different way. I get – I'm super hyper to begin with, and so mm-hmm. I get a lot of adrenaline, and so I feel like my nerves just channel into, like, excitement, and so I just get super, like, bouncy, and I almost, like, have to control myself because I get tired before I even, like, go on stage. Right. And then I'm like, what are you doing, Briar? <laughs> like, slow down. You're already tired. So um, I think, you know, I just told myself – just go out there and do your best and just enjoy it. And, you know, don't stress. Whatever's meant to happen will happen. And there's nothing you can control but just being the best that I could. So I was just like, go out there and do my thing and just channel my nerves so that I walk out there confident and ready to bring what I had to bring. So. You must have felt good after that qualifiers routine. You must have felt like, I- I'm going <laughs> to at least make it through the duels. I mean, anything can happen. Anything I learned can happen on the with show, those judges. Like, I was I like, know. you know what, I don't want to predict anything because realistically – you never know. But you know. did your job. Let's at least but say that. You did your job. I was proud of my performance. Yes. Either way, when I finished that routine, I was really proud of what I did. And I knew that whether I was staying or going home, I was happy with what I brought. So I was hoping, of course, that I was going to go through. But I didn't want to get my hopes up. So right. I was just um, hoping for the best and expecting Okay. Whatever was meant to I'm going to throw this out there. The qualifiers I thought was low for you, honestly. It was 88, 86, 88. Mm-hmm. So 87.3 was the average on that. Mm-hmm. I thought, compared to everything else that I saw, and I'm just, this is just my opinion, everyone, <laughs> and I'm just going to say it to her, but I thought, I was like, where's the, like the 90? I understand <laughs> that they want you to grow, but yeah. they gave you some really good notes. So did mm-hmm. you kind of take those... Like, you know, oh, put course. them in your head and mm-hmm. think, okay, this is a couple things that I need to do for the next round. Yeah, of course. I, I love hearing criticism. I'd rather um, 
hear criticism than almost praising. Like, it, it really helps me grow as a dancer to hear feedback, especially from such powerful people. So, you know, I was extremely happy to hear their comments, and I really took that in as a positive and just knew that if I got through, then these were the things that I definitely had to focus on and have to show them next time. So you usually have, what, a week or two to work on the next routine? Yeah, about three weeks. Okay, about, about three, three weeks, weeks. Yeah. yeah. I know the, the schedule's been a little bit different with, yeah. between from season one where they just, everyone was like crazy <laughs> and had to do routines back to back. Yeah. Um, for the duels, which is the one that they, they put a lot of emphasis on, mm -hmm. and they suddenly got, this season it was like, the burns. We yeah. have to talk about, did they tell you put in some burns in your routine? Um, I felt like everyone really. was talking about it. I mean, I didn't hear much about burns until... Um, they, like when I was watching my competitors and they were talking about burns and then I was like, where am I going to throw in a burn? Because I don't have any. So, so yeah, this, I, I didn't really know. producers whispering in your ears going, we need like six burns in your routine. No, <laughs> like I, I, I mean, I knew it was a duel, but I just wanted to like show a duel in a different way than burns. But you know, I do totally understand that, you know, a duel is a duel and you got to sure. show that person or that act what, what you have. So, um, yeah, yeah, it was fun. I love the duels. It was, it was a crazy night for me. I remember it. That very well. <laughs> that was very crazy. And so for people that don't know, and I, I think we've talked about it on the After Buzz World of Dance After Show, but um, you guys, if I'm correct, you guys got the music um, for both, you knew what you were doing, the duels, who you were going up against, and yeah. then you also got the music for the redemption round, should mm -hmm. you need it, and then mm -hmm. you were able to go into the rehearsal studio. Yeah, we got yeah. both songs ahead yeah. of time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> how much time did you spend on working on your main routine for the duels? And then how much time did you spend on worrying <laughs> about redemption. that redemption round? Yeah. Um, so <laughs> for the duels, I obviously put majority into that one. Right. Um, I was working with, so, so Alan, who was my choreographer, he runs a whole studio. So he could only come the weeks I was competing. Mm -hmm. So he had ideas for me and he would send them. And then Jordan Clark, who actually is a winner of So I Think You Can Dance Canada. Nice. She um, was like... She's amazing. She's like one of my favorite choreographers. And she helped me guide Come Fly With Me along with a few others. And Fantastic. It was great. I loved it. And two days before the duels, I broke my hand in rehearsal. So <laughs> I broke my fifth medical. Why didn't we, we never heard about this on the show, did we? Not really, no. <laughs> I kept it quiet because, the, I mean, I was like, Were you wearing a happened. wrap or anything? Or? Um, I wore like tape when I was rehearsing. Um, but when I got on stage, I just took it off. Just like no big deal. It's broken. Nah. Were you <laughs> Were you using your other hand for tricks then? Nope. Instead, of, you were using Same both hand. hands. Yeah. Wow. I mean, on stage, I didn't really feel it. Adrenaline keeps but, you going. I mean, I was just the stuff that I have in my routines. I'm pretty comfortable with. So you know, if anything, I just kind of move it to where I feel it's comfortable. Like, right. I'll go more on my palm instead of, you know, all the weight. So I just kind of... Shift the weight adjustment. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I put a lot of time into my duels. This is back to the question. Um, redemption, I put, like, maybe half an hour into. I I mean, I, I knew I, there could definitely be a possibility. I wasn't, like, so confident that I'm like, mm, no, I don't need to worry about that. I was more like, you know what? If Sometimes I do my best when I improv. Like, I, I find the tricks that I know I can never do. Right. And I, I love improving. So me and my choreographers just listen to the song we placed certain things um like main tricks that we wanted to showcase if i did because you know at this point you've got to give everything you have kitchen so, sink <laughs> needs to be in there for redemption yeah. yeah so i just planned a few tricks and listened to the song and you know the few days before i was just closing my eyes listening to it and focused on my other routine and was like if i have to do redemption i'll be ready i'll just i when i get into my zone of really having to compete i will turn crazy I will I will do it so I just I knew that that's the best way that I worked was to just focus on the main one and mm -hmm. then put time into it but know that I do my best when it's not totally structured and then you're up against already yes. and <laughs> this was a close this was a very close duel mm -hmm. um and they wound up with the higher score and yes. I I'm gonna say this <laughs> I am gonna call out Neo for that 87 <laughs> I, I I don't understand it. I'm just going to say that. And I know he, he was like, I don't think it's competitive. It's a showpiece. And I'm like, mm -hmm. it's so competitive. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that's, you know, I've been on Neo all season. So I'm yeah. glad to throw that out. You have to be more diplomatic about it. Uh -huh. But when you realize you're going to the redemption round, what's mm -hmm. going through your head at that moment? I was ready. You're I was right. Like, you're all right, good. You want to go? I was like, let's go. Let's do this. I thought that you were like it. a little, not like mad, but like fighting spirit when you got out there. You're like, oh, yeah. I think For you sure. walked out on that stage. I, it was what? Uh, uh, 
Denise and Josh who went. Yes. They went, and then I felt like you walked out on stage. You're like, got this. Yeah. I, I feel like I had to. Like, I had, I have, I was like, not that they, they are amazing. And I actually of know course. them so well. I used to dance with them. Did you really? They grew up at the studio, too, at Canadian uh, Dance Company. So I know them so, so well. It's such well. a bummer in some ways. You don't want to have to compete against them. Of course. I mean, they're so talented. But, you know, I was like, this is the situation, and I love you guys, but, like, let's do this. Mm-hmm. And I just, as soon as the doors opened to walk out, I was like, let's do it. My mind's focused on one thing and one thing only. So let's bring it. Bring Your game it. face was on. Uh-huh. <laughs> and of course, you won your redemption round. So you're uh-huh. like, yay. Yeah, I was happy. I was really happy. Yeah, I, I, that's kind of interesting, though, because then when you get to the cut, mm-hmm. um, you kind of, did you feel like you had to wait? Because you had to do a little bit more dancing than everyone else did to fight for your spot. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm trying to think what I was thinking in that moment. I know, you I have mean, to go back I to was, the fall. It was pretty, like... I was debating what to bring next because I knew Derek loved what I did in Redemption and I knew that that was really raw and was like half improv, half structured. Like it was just Mm -hmm. kind of what felt right in the moment. So I was like, do I go with a song that's more like Redemption, like upbeat and fast and, you know, crazy? Or do I go with like a slow emotional, like it's like a risk. I'm like, I I don't know which one to go to. Right. So um, I've always loved the song Ashes. And I was like, you know, I think I just have to do it and I can still make it powerful while making it, you know, feel great emotionally. It's the greatest singer in the world, Celine Dion. Exactly. Why, why can't you? She's the best. <laughs> and by the way, yeah, she retweeted your dance too, which is kind of epic, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I was in, I was shook. I was like, really? What? <laughs> no way. And, it was pretty crazy. And you had Derek for a mentor and I think mm-hmm. uh, he gave you a really great note. Yes. Yeah. Oh, for sure. He, he was amazing. I loved getting his criticism. Um, it really helped me actually. Cause when I, um, put together dances, like I love tricks and everything, so I just pack it, pack it, pack it with everything that I can because I want to show what I can do. But when I heard that, I was like, let's just strip the routine down and mm-hmm. take out. I took out a lot, like probably half of the tricks I had in it. Wow. A lot of it. So, I mean, it was different for me. But once I performed it on stage, I, I've never felt like that dancing before. So, Was it uncomfortable at all when you take away some of the tricks um, at first, yeah, oh, yeah. for sure. I'm like, I, I need that. I, I want to show that. Like, right. you know, that I'm like protective of them. I'm like, no, right. you want to see this. Trust me. But I trusted my instinct and my choreographers and the creative team on World of Dance, and I was like, let's do it. I'll, I'll bring it. Yeah, and I thought I, what I loved what Derek said. I, you know, he <coughs> wanted you to kind of sit there in the quiet because yes. the quiet and some of those can transitions be just as powerful. Yes. Yeah, and I realized that when I did it, how how impactful it can be without having to kill myself of dancing moves. Like, it's it's pretty crazy to realize. I know, how do you protect your body? Obviously, you had a, a broken hand through yeah. a world of dance, but some of your tricks, I mean, you're landing on your knees, mm-hmm. and you do have to worry about your body. And when you're younger, we always think we're super invincible, and then you start realizing yeah. it's a little, oh, that hurts. Yeah. yeah, oh, that hurts. Oh, for sure. And it, it's it's funny because the more you can protect your body mm-hmm. the, at, at a younger age, the better off you're going to be in the long run. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean... Um, my dad's a physiotherapist, so I got lucky that whenever oh. I was, <laughs> whenever I was like needed, I mean, he was in Canada, but you know, when he came down to watch, if I needed like any quick adjustments, he, you know, he, he was that. great. Um, and of course there was injuries like my back rib. I did some like B-boy stuff to my shoulders where my back rib was killing me and my hand, um, and those little injuries that you have. But, um, for some reason I always find a way to find my hands or my feet and mm-hmm. all these tricks never really... Her, I always kind of find my way. Well, maybe you have like a natural <laughs> instinct, instinct uh, spatially for it. aware. I got lucky with spatial awareness. So yeah. If I feel like I'm gonna fall, like I'll find my feet or I'll put my hands down. Yeah, you're, you'll know right I'm away to brace yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, spatial awareness is a funny thing. I always find when I go to a yoga class and someone that's either yeah. never taken a dance class or an exercise class, yeah. like they put the mat on top of you and you're like, oh yeah. no no no, a yeah, little like, more. <laughs> Yes. Especially where. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, so. it's good to have that. It's, mm-hmm. a, it's a good skill. Yeah. Um. So from the cut, you go to divisional final. Now, I have not seen, because this is pre-taped, I have not seen divisional final. Yeah. I do know the outcome, as do all of you, because you've seen it at this point. Um. Mm-hmm. So you're going to world final. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I am. I know, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, the whole thing really is crazy when you think about it um, because it's. I think it's hard. I don't think people realize how hard it is for soloists. You don't mm-hmm. have a team or a crew around you. You don't even have a partner going, good job, or, yeah. you know, you're having a tough day today, here's a hug. Mm-hmm. How were you making it through sort of mentally through all of this? Yeah, um, I mean, I got really lucky. You know, I have a really strong team, like Alan and... Um, my family and my boyfriend and Jordan, like they were all always there in case I needed anything. But really, I just tried to stay as calm as possible. 
and just train hard and do what I thought I needed to do to prepare for that next round um, and making sure like I'm eating healthy and getting good sleeps at night, just making sure I could do everything that I could. Um, and just, yeah, just being like happy and enjoying the process too, like not being too stressed over it. Like it was so nice to meet such amazing and talented humans Mm -hmm. and to get to know them was like so cool. So I think, you know, just enjoying it and just living in the moment. Who were some of the people you gravitated towards that were on the, the show with you? Um, some oh, of the other contestants so are always so fun. Already were, were amazing. Like, they were so sweet. I mean, they don't speak much English, but just, like, their body language and the way that they talk to you or what they can say is, like, they're, they're so cute. Like, and they're, they're amazing. Little heart, what is their little heart yeah, thing they that do, they do? I actually, they taught it to me, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I, we just it's had so Darian Lohman in here, and he was doing He just said that they were so sweet with their little hearts. They do. They make, uh, they're, little, the, yeah. they're the sweet. Yeah, it's, like, I, something. Something with, like, thumbs and hearts. Yeah, and, yeah. it's so cute. <laughs> it was they're, really cute. They're adorable. Um, they were super sweet. Um, um they were all great. The crazy eights were like the cutest little things ever. They're the toast of the town. I just have to tell they're people so like cute. I was at an event over the weekend and yeah. they were there. They're like rock stars. Oh my gosh, they're the cutest things. They're so tiny and little oh and powerful. Mm-hmm. Uh, the kings were super sweet. Um, yep. I got to know them and they are like mind blowing, amazing. But on top of it, like they're the sweetest, sweetest humans. Like they're so nice and it's so cool to see different cultures come together yep. and it. It's amazing. Pop and John was amazing. He's so inspirational. Madison and Darian, like everyone that was in my division, was so talented. Jonathan and Jorge are my oh. favorite. Jonathan, if you're watching this, <laughs> you're the best. He's so sweet. They are both so sweet. Jonathan and Jorge. They are such a joy oh to watch. Oh my gosh, they make me like smile so hard and laugh so hard. Like, oh my gosh, they they were amazing. And, and I'm not only them. dancing, but as humans, they're just so funny. I, they amazing. just seem like a. They're a joy to be around. Are they just re- in general? Oh my gosh! Oh, I love to hear that. Oh my gosh! Yeah, because when They're I watched amazing. them when I was in studio that one time for the mm-hmm. the cut, I did get to watch them, and yeah. I really didn't. The cast list was not out at the time. I was there for a press day, so it's just me being kind of thrown in, mm-hmm. watching about two hours of the show. Yes. Um. So I, I'm trying to process like what I'm seeing and who I'm seeing and who these names are, and mm-hmm. I was like, I don't know what I just saw, but that was amazing. <laughs> They're amazing because they came out with that Latin oh number. My gosh. It was very that so tropical. Good. It was great. Yeah. Everyone in that division. It was amazing. And even the other ones, Ellie and Ava, Lauren Yakima, I know most of them from like just the dance world. Competitions and um yeah, I was so inspired by everyone. It was so cool to see different ages, different levels. It's a fun styles. atmosphere backstage too. You oh guys my gosh, are all it's so fun. <laughs> it's so fun. I love it. I miss it. It was a it was a joy. I bet there's a, a bit of once the tapings are all done, there's mm-hmm. probably a bit of um a letdown, a little not that you're you know, you're probably tired and you're happy to grab a good <laughs> meal and a nap, but yeah. at the same time, you know, getting up every day and going to the studio and dancing and rehearsing and competing for your life, there's something yeah. really special about that. Oh, there is for sure and I loved every moment of it (laughs) I was like as much as I was ready to like you know take a breather and go home for a second and relax I was like I want this to last forever but I mean it's so cool now that we get to like relive it and just watch it without the stress of like I know being on but you still get stressed I'm still when I watch them like do you get flashbacks though when you yeah when you watch it do you think oh in this moment I was super nervous or I was feeling really good this day or oh for sure yeah this day my hand was killing me like (laughs) totally totally and it's funny when I watch back like when the judges are talking to you, like you're such in like a gaze, you're like, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, thank, thank you, thank you. Thank that you, like thank it's you. actually nice to sit back and listen to what they were saying because sometimes it just happens so fast that I just forget like ha- what half of what they were saying was. <laughs> I was like just so in the moment. But yeah. I know I'd be hoping my choreographer backstage was taking notes because we're like yeah. ah, that went over my head. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> J Lo and Derek and Neo were talking to me, and I'm like, yeah, uh, yeah. Did you give me a good success. score? Am I going to the next round? Great, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I know you're like, no, you're through. You're not, and you're like, okay, great, awesome. Fantastic. I'll figure out the rest. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep on going on. Let's talk a little bit about divisional finals since everyone has seen it, except for me, which is kind of weird because it's like a time travel <laughs> yeah. thing that we're going to be doing. But yeah. um, what was that particular round like for you? Because you have. With the cut, we lose 50%. And then mm-hmm. when it comes to divisional final to world final, you lose with two thirds. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's it's brutal. Uh huh. It was, I mean, in the uh, Pop and John and Darian and Madison are such amazing acts. And mm-hmm. we're also different from each other. Like, even though so Darian different. and Madison are contemporary, like the way that we um, dance is just completely different. Which I love. It's, it's I like so diversity cool. in oh, yeah. when they have that in division, that it's not like all hip hop or all contemporary. It's great. Yeah, so I really enjoyed that. And even the cut was like that. We had tavers, we had the ballroom, we had mm-hmm. um, the Latin hip hop. It was all different and it was so, so fun. cool. Um, 
so divisional finals sorry what was the question um, yeah, so walk us, yeah walk us through that because <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of pressure in that um mm -hmm. where right you know you're you know that two-thirds of you are not going to make it to world final yeah um so for my mindset for divisional finals um i kind of told my story through the first three routines. Mm -hmm. I mean, the first one was more just like, hey, here I am. Look at this. <laughs> I'm um, Briar. <laughs> and then I knew for the second one. Give me an 85 one. above. <laughs> We're good. I knew for the second one, you know, I wanted to tap into that more of what my story was. Mm -hmm. So I really channeled that. My third one was more like rising from the ashes, you know, becoming stronger and moving on and knowing that, you know, I'm okay now and I'm here. So that was that one. And for divisional finals, I just wanted to show, because I love contemporary, but also love jazz. I've always been a fan of jazz. So I was like, I'm going to show a different side of me that they have never seen before. Oh. And and that I've... I haven't seen yet either. <laughs> <laughs> I, I yeah. will. But it's yeah. completely different than I can't my wait. last ones. But it was like one of my favorites to do. It was so fun. I was loving it. And oh. I have a prop, and it was just like so fun. I love it. That is great. Yeah. Who mentored you for divisional final? Neo. It was Neo. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Because yeah. he's the one that, you know, I thought lowballed you. Um, what kind of feedback was he giving you? Um, yeah. Because um, I told him. I was like, you've been my hardest critic. And I'm just wondering, like, what I can do to really, you know, show you that. Or, yeah, what can I do to impress you, really? I was like, flat what out. I'm I like, what can I do to impress you? Please tell me. To get a million dollars. <laughs> please, please tell me. <laughs> um, and he was super sweet. He's like, thank you. And I'm like, you're welcome. But. So what's but, it? <laughs> what is that feedback? Yeah. yeah. Um, so his feedback for the routine, my divisional finals, was more, um, I'm trying to think back. Um, it's not emotional, this dance. I think it was a bit of, you know, dynamic, and the song choice that I had was really powerful. Mm -hmm. So really matching my movements to that song and clearing up some movements and making sure that it all matched, not just music to lyrics, but also, like, movement to prop, and there's a lot of more things to consider. Yeah. So just cleaning up and even taking stuff out, um, dynamic changes, like... Um, this one I wanted to portray a little bit more like hip hop in it, you know, and contemporary and jazz. Like I wanted like, to hit I've a got bunch. all these styles in my So I think what tools. you wanted to see was more in like divert like where's the hip hop side? You know, where is this? Like not section, section, section necessarily, mm -hmm. but like just if you want that to be portrayed, just show us a little bit more about, you know, what parts could be looking like. Organically in the movement, yeah. yeah, make it happen. Yeah. So I think he had great advice and it was really cool to talk to him and to see what he thought. I could do better with and he was brutal to you I yeah. don't know what it was but I was happy because he Good. was really happy at the end of this one and I was like finally oh my goodness I know you're like check it took I was like, Yay. all the way it took all season <laughs> yeah oh my gosh it was amazing um we can't obviously can't talk outcomes or anything about world final mm -hmm. but what was your preparation knowing that you made it to world final because this is a big deal this is exciting and you know yeah. no matter what the outcome is i always say whether it's so you think you can dance or dancing with the stars or the, you made it through every show oh oh my gosh something my so goal was even of. just to get to the finals i was like if i get to the finals and i win my division like i'll be so proud of myself yeah and even if i didn't even if i got not even past the qualifiers if i'm happy with my routine and i'm proud of what i bring i couldn't be happier i couldn't ask for any more right so going into the world's finals you know i was so stoked i was like i reached my goal and now i have another one to reach so ooh, like hey i yeah, have you're the like, challenge i'm like let's do it achievement unlocked like here's yes. the extra the little bonus question it, yeah, it's yeah. Like the cherry on top to it yeah i got and um yeah it was it was an amazing i mean it was a shorter prep because obviously there's less acts but we did have more rehearsal time because mm -hmm. at the studio there's less acts practicing um, and I just wanted to, in my last routine, just kind of showcase um, the whole, like my whole journey on the show, technically. My whole journey in life, my whole journey, just everything in one yeah. last piece of what I thought I wanted people to see. Have you had time to even sort of breathe and think about what you experienced and what you went through with World of Dance? Because I do think that mm -hmm. it's a great platform for everyone. I feel like a lot of the contestants sort of spring onto so many incredible other opportunities from mm -hmm. this particular show. Yeah. Um, it, it, I definitely was in shock for a little bit. I yeah. was like so on a high. Like, I just ah! go through? And it was yeah. right before the holidays. You probably went home oh for the gosh. holidays in a state of shock. Like, yes. what did I just experience? I definitely did. But I think after Christmas is kind of when I was like, oh, okay, okay. And just looking back at things and Mm -hmm. It was great. I, I loved it. I loved every moment of it. You have some really interesting goals, which I love actually, <laughs> because it really incorporates your skill set. And mm -hmm. sort of, so, tell us. I'm going to let you, in your own words, sort of yeah. tell us what your thoughts are moving forward with your career. Yeah. So, um, of course, I love dancing, and now that I can do it again, it's kind of like a new level of passion for me. Mm -hmm. I never take it for granted, and I'm so grateful to be able to do it. And with what I achieved on World of Dance, every time I performed. 
I just have never danced like that, especially Ashes is where it really turned for me, where I was like, well, I never knew I could actually dance like this. So I'll always love to dance, and, you know, I'll take classes all the time, mm-hmm. and um, if opportunities come up in dance, you know, of course I'll take them. I, I love, love dance, and I hope to be doing it You're for the rest of my life. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but I do, I do love acting, and I have a passion for that, and I want to get into, you know, action films would be like my ultimate goal, you know, stunts. doing stunts, doing my own stunts, doing my own, um, if there's dancing involved, dancing, flips, um, and of course acting. So I, I want to get into that area and just, you know, have both, but I think working on acting side would be really cool. So oh, I love, yeah. see, I love that. I'm like, I'm already picturing the next Marvel film. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. That'd be like, that's oh incredible. my God, a dream come true. Are you going to be moving here to Los Angeles permanently? You're going to stay in Toronto. Where are you going to? Um, it's I'm a kinda, tough I one. bounce back. Yeah. Um, I'm from Toronto, and there's actually a lot of opportunity there right now. I filmed um, a Netflix film last couple months, and I'm doing some series. Can you tell us what that is? I don't Inglet? know yet. Okay. Well, we'll, I don't we'll know. be watching Netflix. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm always I'm like, like can you tell us? Yeah, I don't think so, but I'll keep you updated. Okay, great. Um, and I have um, a few tours and some seasons um, coming up from some shows. You're going on tour with um, The Next Step, I'm going correct? on tour with The Next Step. And you yes. guys are going to the UK, Ireland, that area? Yeah, Australia. <laughs> Australia, too. Yeah. Yeah, so You're we're not coming that. at all to the US? Not with The Next Step, no. I know. No. But I was, it's fun. I didn't realize, it's on Universal Kids. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know that. And so yeah. I was thinking, oh, I've got a lot of episodes to go back yeah. and watch. <laughs> yeah, no, so it's going to be fun. I love touring with them. So I have that near the end of the How year. many tours have you guys done together? Oof, we've done a lot. Yeah. Maybe like four full tours where it's like three months of touring, three to four months of touring. That's great. Yeah. And it's been amazing. Maybe even more. I think what What is the reach on this show? Because, it, you know, because it's on Universal Kids, it's not mm-hmm. on, you know, it's, I'm not like flicking on ABC and yeah. seeing it per se. So now mm-hmm. I... Now that I know I can go seek it out, I love that. Yeah. Um, but what is the reach on it? Do you hear from fans in Australia all the time and Europe? Oh my and... gosh! Before the World of Dance, my biggest market was the UK and Australia. Oh, wow. It's huge out in the UK on CBC and all those networks. Um, it's yeah, it's huge. When we go there, it's crazy how many fans we have. It's it's nuts. <laughs> okay, for any viewer or listener who hasn't seen the next step, just tell us a little bit about it because I love the premise of yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So the next step is like a tween show, like for Which teenagers. Is exactly why I would love it. Yeah. I love tween. <laughs> a lot of drama involved, but also a lot of amazing dance. Um it's pretty much about a dance studio called The Next Step. Um and their goal is getting to the big competition at the end of the year. So whether it's regionals, nationals, internationals, and all the drama in between it. So you know, between relationships or between um like fighting for the top spot, fighting for the solo, um, mm-hmm. people getting injured, you know, all the drama that a studio may even have in real life. We kind of brought it to TV and made it happen. And it's an amazing show. I'm so grateful to be a part of it. How I saw a couple of videos. I was looking at them on mm-hmm. YouTube because Universal Kids has some of the dance um, numbers yeah. on their YouTube page. And mm-hmm. I was like, that's not Briar. I'm like, no, that is Briar. She's yeah. so tiny. Oh my gosh. I started that show when I was like 13. Yeah. I was very young. It must, you must have been about 13, 14 when oh, I, yeah. the, the video I was looking at today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was a baby. <laughs> you were so tiny. Yeah. So, how did the opportunity for that come about? Did you audition just like a it was regular? Actually, through dance because I hadn't gotten into acting. Like, I was so focused on dancing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I actually, they just had open auditions like at my dance studio because they wanted to find great dancers along with actors. So I um, auditioned through there and then went to the callbacks and then I started acting and um, dancing and then it just kind of like formed. It was pretty crazy. How many seasons have you done? Like five, six? Five. Five. Yeah. Yeah. And you play Rochelle? I do, yes. So tell us about <laughs> Rochelle. What is Rochelle all about? Rochelle is very feisty and she's kind of like sassy she has like a little bit of an edge to her for sure she really cares about dance and being the best and that's kind of her main focus <laughs> to good. be honest but um yeah she's like really hardcore and focused and driven and she yeah. get a little romance ever um in season crush. six she did in season six yeah season six she did okay good. um yeah but i mean very competitive like her personality is her personality. Little type A. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Funny to watch. That's incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, I do know I have a couple of fan questions, so mm-hmm. I want to make sure that I get those out. Sure. Um, oh, I love this one. Who are your... This is from Cheryl. Cheryl always has great questions for us here yeah, on the Cheryl. show. <laughs> um, who are your choreographic influences? Ooh. So, like, what kind of choreographers do I look up to? Yeah. Who maybe inspires you? Um... So Teddy Florence has always been a big Ooh, inspiration for me. Teddy Florence is fantastic. Yeah, Teddy Florence. Um, Shaping Sound. There's so many. Haven't seen him. Yeah, Travis Wall. Yeah. Um, Nick Lazzarini. All of those guys. All of them. Um, oh my gosh, there's so many. 
Um, I'm trying to think of all of them. Of course, Alan and Jordan. Um, Alan's son, the studio owner's son, his name's Isaac. He's an amazing dancer and choreographer he, as well. Yeah, yeah and he. He's really inspiring, too. Kind of like Teddy style. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Um, I would say, yeah, Teddy, Travis, Nick, um, Chantel. There's so many. Like, oh, my gosh, I could go on forever. I know. It's always um, fun, though, to hear, uh, like, those people Danny that inspire Long, you. There's so many. Yep. Now they're all coming to mind. Now you're like, wait. I'm like, wait, me and Michael, there's so many. I could go on Mia forever. Mia Michaels. That, she's tough. She is tough. Yeah. She's you have no to have joke. a mindset for her class, that's for sure. Yeah, you can't go in there just going like, yeah. No, nope. and then you, you gotta go in Syria. You gotta go in with uh, what is she? She's always like the unicorn. You can't yeah. be a unicorn. You have to Don't be, be a donkey. That's, that's no, her. No, you do not want to be a donkey. <laughs> donkey. Kyle Hanagami. I love Kyle. <gasps> yes. Um, now they're all coming to mind. Mark Miesmer. All of them. I love them all. Mark Miesmer is like killing it out there on the competition. Oh Some gosh, of the solos the he does for people are just really incredible. I love watching them. I know. Um, so you, Cheryl also wanted to know if you've had any major injuries or surgeries. <laughs> I, surprisingly, I haven't. Well, knock on knock wood, wood. I've only broken my hand in my entire wow. dance career. Wow. Yeah. So World of Dance was your first Break. major yeah. injury. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. you've taken care of your body. Maybe it helps, too. Your <laughs> dad know. probably. But I'm sure having, you know, your dad who, you know, understands, like, know how to make sure that your yeah. body's adjusted well, I'm sure it helps a it little does. bit. It does. Or and I mean, like, I grew cool up it. in gymnastics, so I kind of, my body was... You know, I was aware of my body and what worked and what I knew wouldn't work. And I mean, I always have those little problems like my knees and my back, but nothing too too serious. No, Thank not good. It continues that way. Yeah. How how much gymnastics were you taking? Like five dance classes a week, and then you'd be at the gym otherwise. Like how? What was the balance of that? So I actually didn't start dance till I was seven. I did gymnastics competitively because wow. my dad was an Olympic gymnast and my okay, my mom what? was an Olympic uh, gymnast coach. So. I grew up like strictly in gymnastics. For Canada, your dad was yeah, three-time Olympic gymnast. Colorado. Which, which uh, Olympics did he go to? Ooh, um, they were all in the nineties, and I was born in ninety-eight. So I think so, like ninety-two. Was, yeah, like Barcelona. Barcelona. Did he do Atlanta in ninety-six? He did Atlanta. Yep. Yeah. And then he did eighty-eight was Seoul, Korea. Yeah, he did those. Seoul, three. He did Seoul. Seoul, Barcelona, and he made Atlanta. It through, well, obviously, you have good genes, then. If he made it through three, <laughs> he's a tough quads cookie. for yeah. the Olympics. Oh yeah, I mean, he's had a lot of bigger injuries than me, but yes, yeah. well, he, yeah, those that, some of the, the iron crazy. cross that they do in oh my god, it's nuts. gymnastics, it's crazy. So this is where it comes from. And, and your mom was an Olympic coach. Yeah, she was for the girls' team. She was a what year a gymnastics? Do you remember? One of them. They met at the Olympics. So oh my, oh my think, god! So the Olympic romance. Yeah, I know. So cute. This is so cute, Briar. <laughs> this is like a movie. We yeah. should make a movie out of that. And then you can play your young mom. And <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's really I cute, that. actually. Yeah. So I grew up in gymnastics till I was seven. And then oh. um, I was starting to get injured at like such a young age. And so my parents were like, we'll just try you in some things and see if you like it. And if not, then it's all good. So there was no pressure for you to no. follow that same Olympic route? No, I just kind of grew up in it because I loved it. I loved I was so hyper. I had so much energy. I wanted to move. And that kind of I just gravitated towards gymnastics yeah. and I loved the challenge my parents were super in it so I just loved it were and they then, coaching when you were younger or um they weren't coaching I was at like a gym club but they knew the owner super well yeah and, you know because that's where they were training um and then yeah I got into dance when I was seven and I just tried it and loved it and then yeah I still do gymnastics like I try and go to the gym whenever I can even when I was younger. what's your favorite um event um Ooh, beam was the hardest for me. Oh my gosh, I loved um, the bars. You did, yeah. I loved bars and floor. Bars and floor, I would say. Yeah, and that's, the, and that's usually they usually work opposite each other. Mm-hmm. Oftentimes, bars workers are not good floor yeah. workers. Like I always think of, yeah. like, you think of like a Nastia Lukin. She mm-hmm. is a bars and beam worker, and then yep. usually your vault and floor. Totally, yeah. So it was like I don't know. I just loved those two. But maybe I, I'm I, saying I, floor because it's like a dance stage. I don't know. It, <laughs> it is. Although I feel like they've moved away from it. I, I though I love Morgan Hurd on the U.S. team because mm-hmm. she adds elements of dance back in there because yes. back in the 80s and 90s there was a lot of beautiful dancing going on those floor routines yes and now yeah. it's a little bit more regimented mm-hmm. they yeah. just get to their corner to do their <laughs> tricks <laughs> I, I love gymnastics i follow it very carefully but mm-hmm. um yeah i'm yeah. always like just add a little more dance guys you can do it yeah for sure <laughs> i feel yeah but yeah i'm like get get into your ballet class yes <laughs> that's yes. what i always say because it helps them so much for sure we talked a little bit about this off air um just discussing so you think you can dance mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And for anyone that might have the question, there's yeah. there's kind of a good reason. We we touched upon it a little bit, um, yeah. talking about your epilepsy story. But mm-hmm. 
you didn't do it initially because choreography was triggering your seizures. Yeah. I mean, when I was growing up, so I think your dance was like the show. And of course, and you had to be Canada 18. and US. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And so I was like watching that all the time. And that was my goal to be on it for sure. And then once my epilepsy hit, you know, the, the show is basically how fast can you pick up this choreography and right. how well can you do it. Right. So my dreams of kind of doing that at that point were like, Whew, you can probably do it. I never gave up on it. But I was like, mm, it's going to be a harder one to, to nail. Yeah. For me, especially with the nerves, I was like, Phew. and I don't want to have a seizure on air. So no, nobody. That was kind that. of the little bit of issue there. So um, when I saw World of Dance, and I knew that you, you know, you can learn your own stuff, your own pace, you could do your own style. Um, I was like, oh my gosh, this show is like perfect for me, and so I just kind of fit in with that show. And yeah, that makes a lot of sense yeah, too. It was great. And you still got to work with Nappy Tabs. Sometimes they're on So You Think. Sometimes they're <laughs> oh on, my god, they're, they're always amazing. on World of Dance. They're amazing. Yeah, I love what them. did you learn from working behind the scenes with them? Because their whole team is incredible. I know Brittany Cherry was behind yeah. there. Yeah, and Matt, Matt, Katie. Yeah, Anthony Kinn. Yeah, that whole crew. Oh my gosh, it was. They were so helpful. Um, I mean, we. I would go in with my routine, how I thought you know I'd be happy with it to be, but you know they would. Uh, sit with me and just really break it down and be like, you don't need this or you need this. And they really helped me. And my, my routines really changed, actually, after working with them. There was quite a bit of things that we fixed. And I was super and grateful for the for camera, help. too. That's the other thing. Sometimes we yeah. forget. Yes, they help you with what angles, where to look, what camera to look at, you know, all that stage stuff as well. So it was really cool to, to see. Yeah, I'm always amazed at Nappy Tabs because they are they have their hands in a thousand cookie jars. Yes, but they've got their and they're making place. everything work. It's pretty crazy. They are. And what's amazing is that they can have five projects going on at once. They have each team in place, like, working mm -hmm. on the choreography, but they still know what's going on at each oh, project. Oh, all the time. Yeah, they're super organized. It's pretty crazy. They are pros. Yes. Um, here's what I want to know, Briar. If I have you here in five years, mm -hmm. what's your career going to look like? What's the dream? What's the Ooh. hope? The hope is to be an actor. Okay. Actress. Um, TV, film. You see, I feel like film yeah, seems to like be your movies. genre. Yeah. I mean, I love series. I would take of a series, course. of course, if the opportunity came up. But movies, for sure. I'd love to be in action films and do those stunts and... Um, dancing and hopefully still dancing just for the passion of it and to Absolutely. hopefully inspire. Um, but definitely I'd love to be an actress and, um, I love music as well. I love music. Do you My sing? boyfriend's a musician. Oh, he's, he's every, Miles is crazy. Okay. So Miles is like the triple threat. <laughs> Miles is an amazing triple threat. Yes. So he was actually Billy Elliot on Broadway. Oh, of course he's a triple threat. That's and then he booked the next steps. So we met when we were 13. Yeah. And then, um, I danced with him at CDC. He came to my studio. Mm -hmm. Um, and, then he, he was with me on Worlds of Dance. So we kind of like stopped dancing a bit and focused more because his family band is Walk Off the Earth. That's his uncle and his stepdad. So it's a few, it's a full circle. <laughs> and That's my incredible. agent is his mom. It's, it's like, it's like, it's a full circle, uh, but it's pretty awesome. So you're all intertwined. So now he has like an album out and he loves um, producing mm -hmm. and sharing that. And he actually, it just came out today. So oh. I mean, well, today, now. Probably not that. Today is April 16th, so yes. if everyone knows that's the date we taped this particular show. But he actually um, moved to New York two days ago because he booked uh, Steven Spielberg's West Side Story. And yeah. by the way, <laughs> I was like, I'm really excited. Um, that's incredible. Is he a jet or a shark? He's a jet. He is he's, a jet. Yeah, he's they playing Snowboy. They, oh, he's playing Snowboy. Mm -hmm. They announced the full cast today, too, yes. by the way. Yes. Did you see yes. that? Yes, so I was like, okay, amazing. I can finally share it. Oh. I've been so excited for him, and I haven't been able to tell anyone. That but is wonderful I'm news. so proud of him. I'm yes. so proud of both of you. That's a great. Uh, Gabby Diaz is in it. Ricky Obeda. I know. I so saw it. Think. It's amazing. And Jess it. Prado. Um, yeah. Maddie Ziegler is going to be a jet. I know. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Good I... for her. Oh, amazing. Good for her. For her. I, I'm so happy to hear that. So yeah. we'll, we'll have more people in the cast to look forward to. Yes, totally. I love this. Yeah. Well, you've had a great year. Oh, thank you very much. So, I've been so grateful for the opportunities. Well, it's just a pleasure. So many people have really enjoyed your journey. I had so many requests. Someone came on Twitter today <laughs> and they're like, are you going to have time to have Briar on the show? I'm like, actually, I'm going to meet her in about an hour, but the show won't <laughs> end until about 30 That's amazing. Then. So just <laughs> oh, know so that you, you caught a lot of the dance fans and that oh, they've been supporting you. you all the way through. And That's so sweet. We'll see what happens in World of Fun. I don't know. I know. It's crazy. I, I know. It's crazy. But congratulations for getting there. Thank you and so much. please come back and visit us. I would love to. I okay. would love to. I'd be honored. Thank you so much for having me. And if people want to follow you on Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff, obviously don't listen to me because I made a misspelling <laughs> on it. So It's just Briar No Life. <laughs> Super easy. Yes. All right. We will see you very soon, I hope. Awesome. Yes. Thank you very much. All right. We want to thank Dance Network and Popcorn Talk for presenting To The Point today. Don't forget, for all of your dance news, check out dancenetwork.tv. We'll be back next week. We might have some crazy eights. Oh, oh. oh my gosh. I love them. I know. They're so I cute. I hope so. <laughs> see you all next week. <laughs>
from producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network. We would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals.